okay so we'll start so we'll start with this recap from our last class all right so we discussed that the IRC 37 code is used when traffic is higher and generally in most of the roads if you are except for the rural roads uh, all the other category of roads are designed based on IRC 37 only so in order to know IRC 37 in details you need to learn different concepts so first we learn different you know layers of flexible judgment can anybody recall what were the layers? Sir, a subgrid. Subgrid. Then, what is the existing layer underneath subgrid? Embankment. Embankment. Okay. Then subgrid. Then, so it's always better to come from top. Then you will, you don't get confused. So, yes, sir. First is sir, um, a wedding course or surface course? Surface course. Then? Then the binder course. Binder course. Very good. The base course. Base course. Sub-base course. Sub-base course. Then sub-grade. Sub sub okay. So, we discussed about seal code, tech code. Okay. Prime code, I think I didn't discuss. So, again, prime code is again an emulsion, bituminous emulsion. So, bituminous emulsion generally means it's a mixer of bitumen and water. Okay, forty percent bitumen, sixty percent water. It's mixed in presence of some emulsifiers. So that mixer is spread. Sometimes uh, I think you have observed that the road will be black in color. Some black material, black liquid is applied on the surface of the road. It will look total black. Have you seen that kind of road during the construction phase? Okay. Yes, sir. Ah, so that is generally applied above the base course. That means where aggregates are just placed, above that, this material is applied. It is applied just to ensure that uh, with time, no materials can come up. Okay? No material can come up. Uh, because these are, this is a layer which consists of aggregates and when you talk about aggregates it can be fine aggregates and coarse aggregates so fine aggregates can intrude into this surface surface pores okay so in order to prevent that this prime code is applied okay so uh, and we have discussed in details about all the other layers similarly we discussed about fatigue breaking why fatigue occurs how fatigue happens because of repeated you know loading and loading loading and loading and it happens at the bottom of the bituminous mix we also uh, like discussed how rutting happens generally because of you know uh, lack of compaction during the construction phase, uh, construction phase the rollers were not uh, compacting the layers that much and then maybe the engineers didn't know how many passes of rollers should have been done so because of those things because of the uh, thing like the rollers were say it is moving at a very high speed then also it may happen generally the speed of the roller should be around five to six kilometer per hour then only like proper compaction happens so how to ensure that it is moving at five to six kilometer per hour so in field if the roller is passing and you are the engineer who is present so what you do you just go and walk along the roller generally walking speed of human is around five kilometers six kilometers so the roller should go along with you if you are walking the roller is going the roller should not you know overtake or it should not be like should not stay behind you when you are walking so it should go along with you so that's how you like uh, ensure that the speed is 
control fashion and uh, a bit of weight what type of rollers to use that I think you have already learned in your technical classes so there are many different types of rollers we will also learn these things uh, the construction part but anyway there can be different issues because of which there can be some air voids in the layer and when uh, traffic comes settlement happens it's just like this you see settlement so because of the settlement it will reflect at the top also ultimately this kind of situation will arise so this is called rutting okay so critical positions we discussed right so this is sub base sub base base binder and surface right so fatigue will occur here in the horizontal direction because the tension tensile force or tensile stress will be in this direction and rutting the critical position is just about the subject and that will be vertical in nature so we are concerned about the vertical strain here and we are concerned about the horizontal strain okay so we discuss the different you know configurations uh, of pavement layers that are mentioned in IRC 37. So the most used or the typical pavement structure is catalog A, which is soil subject. That means subject is soil. This is sub base and base is granular materials, means aggregate along with water and bituminous layers that means bitumen plus aggregate the, the binder and surface course so we can use cement just to reduce the thickness cut down the cost if you have uh, the luxury generally cutting down the cost uh, this statement cannot be made like that because cement is also very expensive but uh, if you uh, don't have that much of aggregates near the locality then you can go for this kind of options okay but uh, of course when you use cement to that base and surface you need to provide some crack relief layer either it should be granular materials or it should be some stress absorbing membrane all right so these are the things but mainly in this class we will learn how to design this catalog A. Okay, and of course, we will discuss, but uh, in our numerical example, we will solve this problem. Alright, so these are the two distresses that are considered in IIC design, IIC 37, and we have also discussed that generally. Generally, when the vehicle is present, the critical positions in S per the you know, uh, depth, it will be here and here. But in the horizontal direction, it is generally exactly at the center of the wheel or it may be here also, like at the edge of this wheel or if it is a dual wheel assembly then it can be like here IRC 37 suggests that IRC 37 suggests that you carry out the uh, you find out this strain values at this points only that means here 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 sorry here and here these four points number one number one two Three, four. Okay, but uh, we have seen that sometimes because of this shear action, failure can occur here. So we will consider this additional two points. That means five and six. So exactly at the center of the wheel, at depth say h1 and h2, then at the edge of this 
will uh, say again at h1 and h2 and center of this will assembly okay again h1 and h2 so these six points we need to uh, look very carefully we need to find out this epsilon t values here in these three points and epsilon t values here in these three points okay understood so we also discussed that the generated one will be because of the load and the permissible one depends on the material you are using what kind of material what kind of soil what kind of bitumen what kind of you know uh, what is the thickness so uh, depending upon all those things you can uh, find out what is the permissible strain value and this exactly how much uh, strain is actually coming because of this wheel loads that is that will be your the generated one so this generated one shall always be less than the permissible values okay we stopped here design traffic now see the pavement is generally designed for say 15 years 20 years will come into that for how many years a uh, road has to be designed but uh, how will you ensure that the road will you know last for 15 years without any distress without the requirement of any major rehabilitation how will you ensure that so during that 15 years suppose you are designing this road for 15 years this particular this is the bitumen bituminous mix this is the uh, base plus sub base so i am seeing the granular layers and this is soil structure okay so um, scenarily it is told that the rutting you know, the rutting that occurs should not be should not be more than 20 mm okay this depth should not be more than 20 mm and when cracking occurs okay cracking occurs suppose cracked area is this much this area is not cracked so if you take a section of say 100 meter okay this is say, uh, the road which is generally generally what is the what is the road width of a single line road little this is the 3.75 meters okay so uh, if the road is only both, both of you are correct okay if the road is only a single land road like a less road only a single line is there in that case it will be 2.75 but if the road is double length okay that means two lengths are there then the width of both the lengths will be 3.5 3.5 okay so say this is 3. Point. I am talking about only one length so say 3.5 so in this particular lane, uh, I am considering 100 meter, 60.5 meter. So if I take the total area, um, what will be done? 3500 meter square. Not 350, 350 meter square. Right? So uh, in this 350 meter square, you can find out the area of cracking. So it is cracking right here, here. If the area of cracking is say uh, 35 meter square total, this plus this in this section, so what will be the percentage? Percentage will be 10 percent. Then we can say that the road is okay; it has not failed. But if the cracked area is more than say now the total cracked area is 75. So 75 by 350 will be more than 20 percent 
So in that case, we can say that error has failed. Especially in that 100 meter section, it has failed. Okay. So that can be one way of saying it has failed in fatigue. And the other way, we have learned that rutting occurs. And in any of the section, the rutting is like the rutting depth is more than 20 mm. Okay. Rutting is more than 20 mm. So uh, that is another way of saying that the road has or the pavement has failed. Okay. So uh, generally, when the road is designed for 15 years, we need to ensure that during that 15 years of time, neither this nor this happens. Okay. And in order to ensure that some equations are there, static equations, wrapping equations. So we will have we need to learn these equations and how to use those equations we will also, we will also learn but what is this design traffic see if you have designed the road for 15 years now you need to like uh, suppose there is a road connecting place a to place b okay there is another road connecting place c to place d now this you know this uh, two places are like very important ones and they have some uh, good market places here and there so people from place a will go to place b people from place b will go to uh, place a regularly daily they will travel so daily the road is being used but from c and d because C is nearer to A, so they will go, they will take another road. This road is rarely used. So in both the cases, if you design the road for 15 years, so do you think you need to provide same, you know, uh, same thickness of layers? No, sir. No. Where do you need to give more thickness? So between C and A between not cna we are not talking about this words we are talking about a to b and c to d so of course a to b okay a to b Please. right so uh so your answer is based on like which logic why you are saying that this road needs more thickness both are designed for 15 years so why do you say that this road requires more thickness? Okay. So because the assumed traffic is much greater. Yes, because this road will be used more. The traffic will be more. We know that it is the traffic is going to be more there. Right. So it depends ultimately on the traffic. How this road is going to be utilized by different vehicles. That you know uh plays the important now again suppose now d to e d uh, sorry uh, e f again two places are there e f now uh, if i say that uh, the traffic traffic means say number of vehicles number of vehicles you say i say uh, 1500 1500 numbers daily here also it is 1500 numbers okay but these two are say residential residential areas e to f so 50 those 1500s the most of the vehicles will be cars but these are industrial areas a and b so here it will be truck so do you again think that uh, the thickness should be same no right it should be more in a, the road a b why because the load is going to be more there right so again it doesn't depend upon the numbers of vehicles or traffic it depends upon the load of the vehicles it is going to carry right so yes so there are many factors there are many many factors suppose uh, one more factor i am telling you 
suppose this a to b okay a to b and this is uh, e to f a to b is a double line road double line road so the width is 7 meter e to f is single line road which is 3.75 meter bores carry 1500 numbers of trucks what carry 1500 numbers of trucks same vehicles same loads okay now where do you think the thickness would be more all the trucks are uh, like same weight what do you think they should have the same thickness then sir same thickness uh, any other why do you think the thickness would be more? See, in case of the road AB, this 1500 trucks can go this way, this way, this way. Okay, that means I can say that uh, 750, I am talking about one direction only. Okay, 750 trucks in travel through this left lane and 750 will like travel to this right lane okay but here all the 1500s will travel to the single lane so here if you draw the cross section here it will be like this right the width is more here the width is less so uh, where do you think the stress generation will be more in case a b or EF? EF sir EF why so because since the width is less width is less so the vehicle is not distributed right it is less so it is using the same cross section right but in case of a to b the vehicles are distributed in wider area okay so it depends upon the width also so all these factors we need to consider while calculating the design traffic okay so uh, okay so uh, how do you calculate it? First, you need to find out this A. We will discuss all these parameters A, D, F, R, A, N, all these parameters one by one. Okay? But uh, please write down this formula at least. Okay? So, N design is 365, 1 plus R to the power N minus 1 by R into A into D to F. So where A is your initial traffic in the year of completion of construction. Okay. D is lateral distribution factor. Sometimes we call LDF. F is vehicle damage factor, PDF. We'll again learn in details. N is the design period in years. R is the annual growth rate. So if the growth rate of traffic is 6%, it will be 0.06 okay so why this 365 because a is initial traffic and it is generally uh, given in this unit cv ed commercial vehicle per day okay so in the next slide we will see in details and suppose after doing all the calculations you get this n design value as this much this value is coming then msa we know last class we discussed million standard excels so simply you can divide it by 10 to the power 6 or whatever the value you get that msa you can write that n design is 14.6 msa okay now uh, we'll learn all these values all these parameters one by one First is initial traffic, this A. What is this A? Okay. So this initial traffic 
as I said, it's commercial vehicles per day. Now, what is commercial vehicle? What is the definition of commercial vehicle? How do you differentiate a normal vehicle from a commercial vehicle? Any idea? How do you do that? Okay. Hmm? Any problem? No idea. Okay. Say this uh, in pavement design, commercial vehicle means any vehicle, okay, any vehicle that carries a load more than three ton. Okay. If it carries a lo uh, load more than three ton, then it's called a commercial vehicle. So one ton is how much? How much? A thousand kilograms. Thousand kg. So can you give me this conversion? One ton will be how much kilo newton? So ninety eight hundred kilo newton. So one, 9 point 9 point. one ton is thousand kg, or you can write kg weight. That is converted into newton by multiplying nine point eight one to the newton. So kilo newton will be nine point eight one kilo newton. So it will be nine point eight one. You can write down this important relationship. It will be useful. Okay. So this is commercial vehicles. So we will count only those vehicles. So why? Because this, uh, you know, this private cars, bikes, they don't damage the road. Okay, they can run over the pavement in finite number of times without damaging the pavement. What kind of vehicles damage the pavement? Only commercial vehicles that means the vehicles that carry load more than three ton so mainly trucks buses up to some extent and maybe some overloaded mini trucks okay that's why tolls are mainly collected like heavily collected from this uh, commercial vehicles compared to bikes don't have to pay tolls right because they don't cause any damage and logically from the point of payment engineering the private cars should also not have to pay tolls because they are not causing any damage but since this for uh, otherwise it will be the toll prices will be very high that's why they are also included okay understood all right so now uh, if you remember here we mentioned one thing initial traffic in the year of completion of construction that means how do you arrive at this a how do you find out this value of a cbpt means commercial vehicles per day that much you have understood that how many commercial vehicles are passing to that road per one per one day right or how will you how will you calculate Suppose uh, this is Surhat. You are uh, suppose this is Sikhaga. Okay. What is the distance between Surhat and Sikhaga? No idea. Sir, uh, sixty to fifty kilometers. Okay, let's say 70 km. Okay, 70 km. Now, uh, you have been assigned the task of upgrading this load to a national highway, or maybe you can uh, construct a new road there. So, first task, as you know, is to collect the, uh, is to calculate the design traffic and design, right? And for that, you need this A, value of A. So what we will do? How will how will you find out A? Just tell me. Simply you will go 
we will take a table, we will sit here and we will count the number of vehicles passing in both directions, right? We will count. Generally, this A is taken for one direction only. If this is a dual, you know, dual carriage way, that means there is a separator. We will consider only this or this. But otherwise, you have to consider both way. If there is no separator, that means like two lane, two lane highway. So you are calculating the number of vehicles, counts how many vehicles okay. in this direction, in this direction. So you are just counting. Okay, so what are the vehicles you will count? Only the trucks. Okay, trucks, buses and you will exclude bikes and private cars even all rickshaw and the other light vehicles okay that you will exclude so that way you can get a okay but the thing is you have reported this a you have calculated this everything you have multiplied with 365 and all so growth rate also you have included okay the vehicles will increase by some percentage because the country's economy is blooming then uh, vehicle demonstrate everything you have considered it will increase in next 15 years it is going to increase right so 15 years you will put here so you will calculate okay but the thing is during the construction process so you have reported this you have considered ns15 and you have calculated and design but do you think the road will be constructed immediately no it may take two years right so if you uh, consider two years then this 15 will become effectively 13 right so that's why you need to this a is in the year of completion of construction so not before construction it is after the construction so how it is considered for after construction using this formula so you are not basically counting a you are counting this p p is number of commercial vehicles per day as per last count so just before construction whatever you have counted you are simply sitting there counting the vehicles commercial vehicles and something you have got CVPD commercial vehicles per day in one day in 24 hours this many vehicles passes okay so that you report as P and X is number of years between the last count and the year of completion of process that means you have reported and after that suppose it will take two years three years whatever that X will come here so this R will be again your uh, rate of growth same R that you are considering here so you will get basically A. So you will be able to find out A. Okay. And you have to be very very careful what type of road category you are going to design. If it is a divided carriage way, like I told, like this, like this one, you can see there is a divider, median in between. Then only the directional traffic column. That means if you only here or here this needs to be reported as a or p whatever you will ultimately eventually become a but if it is undivided like this most of the road channels now are like this then you have to consider the total traffic in both direction like going coming you have to sum up and you have to report that as p that will become a any doubt till now no no okay very good so this a part is clear what is a how to calculate a right yes sir. okay now let's come to this d d is lateral distribution factor now uh, if you remember from the example a to b is dual carriageway 
also a double length and C2D is was a single single length. So distribution is more in your here, right? Here it is distributed in A to B. The vehicles are distributed. So the intensity of load will also be less, right? So in order to like consider this difference between A to B or C to D, we need to consider how laterally how these vehicles are distributed laterally, okay? Like this, this how it's distributed. So for different category of roads, it is already given in IRC up to the failure. So for single end loads like this 3.75 meter, okay, you need to consider DS1 because all the vehicles will be moving through that lane only. There is no other option, there is no other lane. You cannot change the lane. So all the vehicles will be concentrated only through that lane. Right? So D will be as it is. That means whatever the traffic you are getting, you are multiplying with one. That means the same intensity. Okay, but if it is an intermediate length, that means that which is now bigger, 5.5. Sometimes, uh, have you noticed this intermediate length works? In some works, you will say that it's not a double length. There are no demarcation like this. Like this, there is no demarcation. Sorry, uh, sorry like this, there is no demarcation. But that which is a little bit more than a single length. Have you seen this type of works? Yes, sir. So that width is generally 5.5 meter and it's called an intermediate land road. So in intermediate land road, the vehicle has have the liberty to you know uh, change I'm not say changing the lane because there is only one lane here, but it will be somehow more distributed here and here. Right. So in those cases it's considered 7.75. That means whatever the traffic we have calculated, the intensity of the traffic can be reduced by 25% because it's distributed now here and there. Okay, so that's why it is taken 0.75. All right, similarly, two lane two way roads. What is two lane two way? Is this a two lane two way road? Yes or no? Okay. Yes. Okay. No. See, how many lanes are here? First, you tell me how many lanes in this diagram. The two lanes. Four. Mm -hmm. Four lanes. Four. This is one lane. Okay. This is one lane. This is one lane. There are four lanes. One, two, three, four. One lane is only 3.5 meter. So if you have a double lane road, it will be 7 meter, and this line will be at 3.5 meter. Okay. So based on how many 3.5 meter width uh, lane is there, we will call, we will turn this road. In that person. So two lane means 3.5, 3.5 only seven. So two lane two way will be like this. Like this. Like almost 80 percent of the roads in SM are like this. Even some national highways. Okay. Then four lane single carriage way. Is this a four lane single carriage way? This is a called carriage way. Okay. I think uh, these things are generally taught in highway engineering, fifth semester. You don't remember or you are not taught. Anyway, anyway, so this is a carriage way. So uh, in this case, can you tell me this is four lane single carriage way or dual carriage way? Sir, dual carriage. How can you say? What is the logic? 
so there are two carriageways um i am taking one direction as one carriageway okay okay all right <coughs> see here also it says single carriageway means in both the directions that means it can be two direction and single carriageway also then what's the difference it depends on what type of median is there so if this is simply a line okay this is simply a line drawn with color just like this one this is a yellow color line then it will be a single carriageway but if this is a separate median in between from uh, that means both the roads are completely different there is no connection between the roads the pavements i mean the pavements they don't have any connection in between then it will be called dual carriageway are you able to visualize yes sir any doubt any one of you yes, sir uh, please explain that two lane two way roads once again two lane two way two lane two way are the normal roads that you see just here this is a two lane two way mm -hmm. because two lanes two way in both directions in four lane divided carriers way one of the carriers way will be used only for this directions okay then you can you can tell it but you should not tell that it's a two lane one way road okay, nobody uh, tells like that no there's nothing like two lane one way because uh, no road is one way like right? although it is uh, because of some laws Uh, they make it one way, but generally it can serve both purposes, right? So two lane roads. If some roads is there, there should be some. Uh, they, if, uh, if one road has the facility of going this way, it should have facility of coming back also. So there will be a road near, like just by the side of the median. So ultimately it will become a four lane divided carriageway. Okay, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of you, is it clear? Okay, <clears throat> so this is four lane single way means there are four lanes one two three four and in between the lanes you have by the way do you understand the difference between this dashed lines the solid line mm -hmm. sometimes you will see that these lines are continuous they are not like this. Sometimes you will see it's continuous. What does it mean? It means that you cannot change the lane. Okay. Suppose in the same road, which is like this, and suppose there is a curve, you will see that it becomes continuous. That means here, if you are riding here, you can go to this lane, you can come to this lane. No problem, but if it is solid continuous line, then you cannot change the line. You have to remain in the same line and go. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So, like four lane carriage way, uh, it is this point four two lane two way, this point five dual carriage way, this uh, point six and point five point four five. Provided A is directional traffic, just like here I have discussed that A should be whenever you report A or P, if it is uh, divided carriage way, then you should take only one direction. Either you take this direction or this direction. Don't sum up. But if it is undivided, then you can sum up this plus this. But you can sum up and that value you can report as P or as A. But here only one direction is P, then comes A. Okay, so that's why in dual carriers where roads D is 0.6 and 0.55, provided A is directional traffic. Directional means either this way or this way. Don't add. Okay, both the directions. It is a dual carriageway. Understood? 
what is t yes sir. okay now uh, this very very important parameter which is called vehicle tennis factor you get you will see equations from vehicle tennis factor okay because the concept is little bit tricky now why this uh, vehicle tennis factor is needed like i was telling uh, there will be some same road 1500 vehicles so all are empty truck okay all are empty truck okay suppose uh, this point this place a this place b okay so suppose uh, here some plant is there also there is one fci go down is there so on the rise that is down here in different regions so this is carried from place a to place b like this so after distributing or you know dumping the materials in place b all the empty trucks will come here okay so 1500 trucks will go in this direction again 1500 trucks will come back so if it is if this is a dual wheel you know divided carriage way then this this road okay this part of the road and this part of the road do you think it is uh, it will be a good idea to design in the same fashion here the load is very very less because all the trucks are empty here it is fully loaded trucks right so if you are simply counting the number of trucks you will see 1500 1500 so how this difference will come into picture Uh, so the weights are different so there must be a multiplier yes so uh, we need to conduct some excel load survey okay we call it excel load survey in the last class we we'll discussed what is excel so this is a track set on the top here so this is one excel this is another excel some trucks are like this so this is one excel again this is there are there are two excels but we club it together and call it tandem excel okay and then if this is like this then again we, we will not tell that uh, there are three excels this is little bit you will get confused again if you discuss concrete pavement because in concrete pavement they are considered different but anyway we are discussing flexible pavement so we will tell that uh, these are excels only but together it's called a trident excel okay. trident excel three three excels are there okay okay no problem we can call different excels so this front excel and this is rear excel but the rear axle is like an assembly of three. It's called trident axle. Okay. So, uh, but again, you will see some uh, trucks which are uh, which will be like this. If I do side to very very big. So it will be like this, like this, like this. Then, then this is the front axle. This is rear tandem this is again rear tandem this is rear trident see the difference gap between these two these two axles will be more so that's why we are not clubbing these four together we also get will be more so, so here it, it has two tandem two tandem axel one trident axel and one single one front axel like this so now these excels need to be weight okay we need to we need to we want to know 
what are the weights of this excels because ultimately the weight will be transferred to the excel on the track so we conduct this excel lot survey where we place some weighing pet okay some weighing pet we will um, Okay. Uh, yeah, we will place some weighing pad here. So, in weighing pad, only one part of the Excel will come. Okay, this part of the Excel will come, not the other part. Okay? This is only one part. So, if the track is like this, you will see only half of the Excel will be weight. So, whatever the weight you get, you have. Okay, so two third will be coming to the near part. So, uh, when you measure the weight it depends so here only single excel is there right so if you place the weight it will be simply you have to consider i mean this is the case of this one this is this case so you are measuring weight under this weights okay only dual rules generally dual rules nowadays right you are measuring here Okay, so you have to simply double the value to get the total Excel of the total weight of this Excel. But if you are measuring here, you need to measure here as well as here. Or you can measure it here and simply you can double it, then again double it to get this. For try them, you can measure in one Excel. Generally, it is uh, like better to measure in all the three excels one by one then you sum it up suppose you get x y z so you write x plus y plus z then you multiply by two so you will get the total weight of this trident excel the trident is like two three excels are there weight of the trident so here you will get uh, x y so it will be two into x plus y here it will be 2x understood yes okay <coughs> all right so uh, generally this survey needs to be carried out before constructing the road along with traffic survey traffic survey means where you are simply counting how many vehicles are there okay because uh, that will again decide what should be the width of the road everything all right but uh, since this is a payment class so i will be talking only about the player thicknesses so uh, there in traffic survey you need to count okay, how many vehicles and ultimately in excel of survey you will get the idea of the weight of the excels so generally if you are not able to carry out this excel of survey maybe you don't have this facility you don't want you don't have money then irc has suggested that you can assume that fellow okay so uh, they have given this table so it says that if the traffic volume okay the traffic volume cvpd traffic survey is must you need to carry a traffic survey and the cvpd you are getting in between 0 to 150 then based upon the terrain you can consider these values for rolling and plane so what is the 
how do you differentiate between rolling, plain, hilly terrain? Anyone? Okay. Hindu Papa, rolling, plain, hilly. How do you differentiate? It depends upon the slope. Okay. So in the terrain, uh, like what is the gradient of the road based upon that you differentiate. So for plane it is zero to ten percent, slope is zero to ten percent, it's called plane, rolling ten to twenty-five, then it becomes mountainous, hilly, like that. So anyway, uh, uh, mountainous and hilly same, steep terrain is also there if it is more than 60 but anyway based upon the terrain um, as some we mostly have rolling or plain terrain so these values need to be used based upon the traffic okay now uh, the thing is a an excel okay which suppose uh, you have placed your loading pad we got so 20 kilometer so the total weight will be how much 40 kilometer another excel say this time that uh, this. so this time the track is not empty it is like 40 kilometer so it will be how much 80 kilometer Okay, so uh, now my question is if this is the road, this is the road, this is the track, the stables, and so it travels like this. Okay, say 500 times, 500 times it travels like this, like this, comes back like this, 500 times. So, if I say my damage is D1 because of this track, which rear axle is 40 km, and if I say my damage is D2 in this track, where the rear axle is 80 km, okay, and in both cases it has traveled 500 times. So, what can be the relation between D1 and D2? Sir, D2 could be twice of D1. Twice of D1. Okay. Okay, that is uh, like if you see, that is the first thing that will strike your mind. Since the load is twice, the damage will be also twice. But, 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 the problem is that damage here will be, you know how many times? Damage here will be 16 times. 16 times more. That means if you carry double load, the damage is not double. Damage is 16 times. Because it's 2 to the power 4. If you carry three times load that means if if I make it 120 then you know how what will be the damage it will be d2 will be your three to three the power to the of four of d1 see why overloading is so much detrimental to pavement you don't have to double if you take simply 10 percent extra then also it will be 1.1 to the power 4 will be so much. Understood? So that's why overloading should be punishable by law. No trucks should be allowed to uh, carry extra load because the damage will not be simply double if the load is double. Damage will be put like. Uh, 
called fourth power Dennis formula. Fourth power Dennis formula. So what does Dennis actually means? That means now forget about this 500 times. Now if I say that uh, in the first case it requires 64 passes okay if this vehicle okay which load of 40 km passes the road to and fro 64 times then a small crack appears okay small crack appears on the surface okay now i want you to answer this so now if the load is 80 km how many passes will be required to develop the same crack to the power 4 is how much 16 16 so the ms is 16 times more so here if it requires 64 times here it will require 64 by 16 that means how many? Four times. Four times. So imagine this vehicle can travel 64 times like this, 64, and can cause only one crack. But this vehicle, one, two, three, four, same crack will appear. That's why our roads are distressed so much because the wire loading is not looked into that much carefully okay so understood yes. about this wire loading type concept what is uh, now we will, we will see okay so uh, for single excel single wheel on either side that means it's a single axle there is single wheel on either side nowadays it's very rare you will not get this type of axle in the rear side front axle we don't consider because only one third comes here okay so uh, this type of configurations you will not get no truck most of the trucks will be like this there will be dual wheels okay now for single axle single wheel IRC says the standard load should be 65 kilometer. Okay, 65 kilometer. But if the load is more, okay, if the load is more, then it has to be converted to single load by using this standard Excel by this formula. That means uh, now again remember the previous concept that means 20 kilo newton okay now let's forget 20 let's call 65 65 kilo newton this vehicle was there so it can like go say four times okay but if the load is doubled the 65 into 2 130 kilo newton if it travels okay if it travels even 2 to the power 4 by uh, 16 that many times it will have more effect right so what we will do we will simply uh, 130 divided by 65 2 to the power 4 16 so we will tell that instead of telling that 130 kN uh, a vehicle with one particular newton has passed uh, four times you will tell that a 65 kilo newton vehicle has passed four into 16 64 times is it is it same yes okay if i say that uh, a weight of x has traveled y times then i can say that a weight of twice x has traveled not twice y how many times 
2 to the power 4 into y that means 16 y times it's same right since this load will be different for different tracks so we need to convert it to the standard ones okay so that's why this formula is there so for this kind of you know configuration the standard load is 65 for single wheel with dual wheel on other side that means dual wheel two wheels are on both both sides it has to be 80 because it can carry more load then 10 times accelerate dual wheel on other set like this the permissible or say the standard load by IRC is 148 kilo newton try them excel like this it will be 224 to the power 4 okay so now uh, we will uh, do one numerical where we will find out the PDF. Ultimately, we need that value F, right? We need that value F. You can take a screenshot and we can solve this numerical. So, uh, you have been assigned to you are constructing the road, connecting SIP server and so on. So you have carried out traffic survey, you have calculated how many numbers. Now the next step is you are finding out the VDF, the factor. Okay, because uh, you need to find out how many vehicles, uh, how many numbers of standard excels are traveling. All right, so uh, what you will do, you will simply Go with that Excel pet. We'll keep under some uh, vehicles. You cannot survey all the vehicles. So generally, you consider 20%. So it depends. It the uh, total uh, it depends upon the traffic also. If the CVP is more than 6,000, then you consider 30% of the traffic. So like that, there is a relation. But anyway, you have conducted a survey on 13% of randomly chosen trucks okay what you have conducted excel load survey with that weighing pet okay so uh, you know that from in statistics you don't have to write all the values so we can use some classification so for single excel dual hole that means of this or this you have simply somebody is uh, taking the weight is just shouting the value and you are just telemarking okay he says uh, this vehicle 5 5.2 so you stick here okay then again he says uh, 11 so you will tick here right then again 5.5 you will tick here so like that you have conduct you have carried out all entire entire survey and these are the number of excels okay. for single excel dual wheel for tandem excel it should be dual it will be dual wheel anyway so for tandem excel also like this you have find out found out this values uh, this many excels which range in this category okay for tridem excel also like this Alright, so you need to find out the VDF. So, what we have to do, you have to first, you know, convert this into EALF. So, what is EALF? EALF is called equivalent Excel load factor. Okay, so that has to be if you see here this EALF is calculated like this or this or this or this there are different formulas for different types of excels so uh, for can anybody tell me for this category what will be the formula what should be in the denominator 
Similarly, number of excels are same, like as it was. Uh, how many excel loads of one kilometer, one ton? Okay, remember it's ton. Similarly, for ten ton and all. Now, what we have to do? We have to convert this into kilonewton because it's in the formulas are in kilonewton, and you have been given in ton. So, what we have to do? You have to simply multiply you see here we have to multiply by 9.8 so it means I have multiplied the cells with 9.8 so like that so it's coming I see so this fellows multiplied by 9.8 okay now EALF for single axle dual hole it will be this can you see here here yes H3 by 80 to the power 4 that means 9.81 divided by 80 to the power 4 because it is single axle dual wave. Similarly, for all the cases, you can find out. And this number of standard excels is this is for only one excel, right? But how many excels are there? One kilonewton excels, how many are there? 10, right? When you need to multiply with 10. Okay, here. This is multiply. Anyway, so uh, like that, you have just multiplied this value. You see, this into this the number of excels. Okay. Similarly, for ten times excels also, we first calculate the equivalent. Uh, excel dot factor then multiply with the number of excels you will get the number of standard excels similarly for try them or tend them i will calculate this will be divided by 148 right because here you see this was 148 this is 148 for try them it's 224 right so here for try them, we have to divide it by 224. Okay, so the number of standard excels will be again multiplied by the number of excels. Now we have to sum it up total because we have classified into different categories for calculation, but ultimately we need one number, right? So we need to sum it up because everything is now converted to standard excels. So total will be this much plus this much plus uh, this is the summation of this you see summation of from here to here this is summation of here to here and then this is summation of here to here now grand total will be summation of this this and this so, but total numbers of acceleration how much 1371 how this 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 like that then again you can plus this 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 so all the excels single total single total tandem total trident 
everything you do add you will see this one three seven one and pdf is nothing but this grand total divided by total number of excel which is 2.95 so we have now we know that because there is some overloading overloading in the sense some vehicles are there which are carrying more load than the standard one some may carry less load than the standard one for single excel what is the standard load what was the standard load single excel dual wheel kilonewton so in terms of ton so say 80 will be in between somewhere here right so yes sir so uh, 80 is say say let's consider 9 so you see or maybe you can see here present here you see from 6 to 8 there are 360 excels maximum maximum is in the like near to the standard excels very less when the excel loads are very very less the frequency is also less very high also this is also less okay so we can now say that instead of saying this like this we can say that uh, total this many vehicles this many vehicles like this now directly we can say that standard excels standard excels whatever the number of vehicles will be the number of excels because we are considering only the rear excels right the so standard excels will be the number of vehicles vehicles into pdf okay and this pdf we have simply calculated here okay. which we have got as how much 2.95 now in this formula in this formula in this formula this f will be now 2.95 a is say 1500 1500 vehicles are there but some vehicles are carrying more load some are carrying less load so in order to adjust because ultimately we will say it standard excel like msa million standard excel so in order to tell how many standard excels are there we will simply multiply with this 2.95 factor because some vehicles are overloaded understood yes okay so we can conclude right now we have discussed a we have discussed d we have discussed f so let's discuss this n so n is basically for how many years we are going to design okay so this n is the design life without major rehabilitation there can be minor little bit distresses but the pavement should not fail in that design life and this design life is different for different category of roads if you are considering this rural roads maybe you can design for 15 years r1 roads 20 state highway national highway for 20 years the high density corridors like expressways and all minimum 30 you have to design the road for minimum 30 years okay so n is pretty simple just whatever the fellow you you will know the category of the road or it is a national area state highway so based on that directly you can take the value so 20 15 okay okay now this traffic growth rate r all right so how to calculate r so this itself is a different code okay so traffic focused on highways i see 108 so this code describes in detail how to calculate r because that is very very important so what do you think 
Okay, what do you think? Where uh, on which of the things this traffic growth matters? Can anybody tell? Okay, let's have a discussion. Say today, uh, the number of vehicles are fifteen hundred, but after twenty years, fifteen hundred means fifteen hundred commercial vehicles per day. But after fifteen years, it will be more, of course, more. So, what is the rate at which it will increase? What do you think? On which of the parameters it will depend? Is there population? Population increase. So you can say that the rate at which population is increasing. We can consider the same R, can we? So, so there are also various factors. Population might be a part of it. Ah, so can be the economy factor. might also influence. Yes, economy. So how do you measure economy? So using GDP. GDP. So this GDP also plays an important role in determining R. Okay. So this make uh, automobile section. How it's uh, how it's like um, at what rate this auto auto automobile sector is growing that also we need to keep in account because if the automobile industry is not growing then if the people are becoming rich then also they cannot afford cars right so yes. it depends on many factors like you can simply uh, look at the past trends okay how the traffic was growing you can see the demand elasticity it's uh, from transportation planning part but gdp state domestic product sdp these things are considered and ultimately some value is taken but for our case since we are simply you know, doing some um, numericals to understand how to analyze this design we can assume any value but when you are assuming the code says that in absence of the data the estimation of the annual growth rate of commercial vehicles or when the estimated rate is less than five percent a minimum annual rate of five percent should be used that means when uh, you don't have data then you can simply check how the commercial vehicles are growing what is the rate at which it's growing from the automobile sector and, and if it is less than five percent also then also you take five percent okay minimum should be five percent so generally you take six percent six point five percent seven percent like that okay so it's also very simple but remember when you are using r in the formula you should not write six point five you have to write one zero six five Okay, now you will have all the data and ultimately you can design the treatment. Okay, now you need to know that these things will only give you the design based on uh, design traffic which we need. Okay, uh, we uh, we intend to design that means our requirement this is our requirement the traffic will be this much we cannot control this can we control the economy can we control the GDP can we control what is the uh, like demand between these two places we cannot control these things right so everything here is not controlled by us by us I mean payment engineers okay so this is the demand of the road that I need a road the client will say that we need a road which should serve this many of standard excels so it can be 50 MSA 60 MSA whatever it can be any value but we need a pavement that should survive this many standard excels without failing that is our requirement now your part will come as a pavement engineer what we have to do what we will do in the first lecture we discussed as a pavement engineer what we will do we will design the thickness 
will decide what should be the material, what should be the vitamin, what should be the soil type, what should be the severe value of the soil. So everything you need to decide now. Right? Yes. Okay. So uh, now this criteria will come. The routing criteria. Routing criteria means as a pavement engineer, you know that the pavement will not fail if the average rut rate is 20 mm or more. 20 mm or less will not fail. But if it is more than 20 mm, then we will call this critical or failure rutting condition. So we need to ensure that the strain, this epsilon V, if you remember, this epsilon V is such that it will not cause an average run rate of 20 mm or more. So for that this equation is there. Say eighty percent, ninety percent level. Generally, if you are designing an H expressway, you go for ninety percent. Okay, because we need more reliable data. Okay, for eighty percent can be uh, used for other categories. Okay, so this is basically N R is N design only. Whatever the N design you know, suppose N design is you know fifty MSA. 50 MSA, you it's our requirement, so you put 15 to 10 to the 6 here. So you will know what will be the what should be the limiting epsilon value so that the pavement doesn't fail. That is the threshold limit we discussed yesterday. That we should limit epsilon v, suppose it's coming as 300 into 10 to the power minus 6 this value. Okay. Then we should ensure that because of the loading conditions, okay, this epsilon V never exceeds this 300 micro strain. It should never like exceed 300 micro strain. Then it is a cut that your pavement will not fail during the design life. But if it exceeds 300 say it's 315 is coming then it will fail it will not serve this many 50 msa then you can calculate back okay you can put 315 and you will find out that in 30 msa only it is failing that means the road was supposed to serve 50 million excels standard excels but since the material quality pavement uh, layer thicknesses are not uh, sufficient that's why in 30 million excels only the road has pavement has failed any doubt any any confusion here are you able to relate the concepts I will repeat if you want and clip it. But you should understand the whole picture. What is happening? Are you getting? Yes, sir. Others? Okay. Silence is generally taken for a year. So I think. Similarly, for fatigue, also this formula is here NF. So, this NF is nothing but N design. That means if N design we have got as 50 MSA, the pavement has to serve 50 million standard excels, then we can find out what is epsilon t maximum permissible epsilon t. Okay, epsilon t. Suppose we got 150 micro strain. Okay, then we need to design our pavement. That means the thickness, the materials that we are using in such a way that because of the load, it will never exceed 150 mc. Then our pavement will serve 50 mc. Otherwise, it will fail before 50 mc. But here, this MRN is coming because it's bituminous mix. So we need to like consider 
the like the type of vitamin you are using and all so this mrm this thing mrm can be calculated okay like this okay sorry uh, mrm is uh, modulus of modulus of resilience modulus of resilience or you can say elastic modulus elastic modulus this c this c is calculated like this c is 10 to the power m again n is this so it depends upon this percentage of volume of air force many things but uh, you don't have to calculate simply you should know what is the payment structure you are using the different catalogs if you remember you will be mainly using a so for a, a catalog what is the traffic total msa say uh, it's like in between say 45 so you can interpolate here the 3.5 and it will be same 2.5 so c will be 2.5 okay and what are some type of bitumen you are using based on that you get this mr values okay so that you will get uh, this is for cement treated base but i will not teach this part because cement treated base uh, will be difficult for you to digest first i will cover only the typical part typical structure means granular base granular surface bituminous mix and soil surface okay so for that we will start from this material properties of different layers it's like okay. from subgrade to granular subbase then like that we'll study in our next class okay but till here is it clear till these equations is it clear how these equations are you know coming what is the importance of this equation what is the importance yes, of here, yeah, right? Others, you can. Yes, sir. You can just raise your hands if you don't understand anything in between. Clear, right? Okay. Okay then. Uh, we will. In the next class, we will learn these things, we will revise this thing, and we will also start our challenge. So that challenge will be like this the uh, new national highway is proposed, all and divided, connecting Chennai to Mumbai via Telangana, like this. Existing one is this, new one is proposed like this, and we need to design as a flexible pavement and other thickness of different layers. Find out everything. Okay. All right. So let's stop here. We will meet next Saturday. Or if you want any class in between, you can simply let me know. You can take class during weekdays also, no problem. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.